Did Obama win the US presidential election because of plankton? Perhaps. Have a look at this map of the United States. This shows election results for Obama's first presidential win in 2008. In a compelling story put together by NPR's Robert Coleridge prior to this year's election, the author calls attention to marine biologist Craig McClay, who believes the reason for this narrow crescent of democratic blue in a sea of Bible Belt red is indeed because of plankton. As in, plankton. As it were. As it were, over 65 million years ago during the Cretaceous era, as water was receding from the once completely covered continent, you can see what used to be the shore extending through the south, including South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I, -S -S -I -S -I -P -P -I, as it were. As it were, the area was filled with plankton, and over time turned to chalk, which is scrumptiously nutritious, thus fueling a large area of rich soil prime for agriculture. So people moved in and farmed it, a map showing cotton production in 1859. Obviously, the cotton farms thrived where the soil was richer with nutrition, and then slavery followed, leading to a much higher density of African Americans just a few years later at the end of the Civil War. While many chose to move to other regions, many stayed. Y2K? This census map shows the same crescent for African American population density, and thus, we have a pretty compelling way of looking at the power of plankton, as it were. That story was published almost a month before this year's election, so we decided to put together a view of Obama's outcome in this year's election in the same area. Pretty much just what you would expect. Obama country is the plankton crescent. Which makes us all geosocio-political planktonic planksters now for studying the political social impacts of geological planktonology.